back. In this session, we are going to discuss about responsible authorship and credit in engineering research. So, the outline of the module will be like what you understand for crediting a citation, acknowledgement, qualification of authorship then responsibilities of an author, categories of an author, issues of plagiarism, sharing of credit amongst authors and uh, finer aspects with related to it. So, credit for a research contribution can be assigned in three principal ways by authorship, by citation and via a written acknowledgement. So, authorship is by making someone a part of authors depending upon the contribution made. Citation is for using someone's previously published work and by a written acknowledgement means for some contribution in present research that neither qualifies for citation or authorship. So, before we move ahead we can understand this we are again taking as a part of a duty and an obligation to recognize um, the contribution made by others in terms of our, the work done or contributions made to the research that is being done. The conditions for crediting as a citation are widely accepted criteria for citation in research publications are in case you drew results or ideas that already appeared in previously published or formally presented in work. Citations should also be made in case references are drawn from any work presented by others at conferences or disciplinary meetings. List of work cited should be sufficiently complete to allow readers to understand where the reported research fits in. All foundational research contributions that are not a part of common knowledge for the readership of the publication should also be cited. Unpublished work like private correspondence is only cited when no readily available written sources are available. Credit sourcing for such courses can be better handled with acknowledgements. Sometimes in case of published work permission needs to be sought from the concerned person. This part is very important to understand like if we are um, citing someone, somebody's work, sometimes permission requires to be taken. Citation of a person's work does not make the person cited accountable for the work in which he she is cited and thus in most of the times does not require permissions of parties whose work is cited. Because there is no accountability, so of the person who is citing, cited for the present work. So, sometimes in most cases permission is not required also. Now, how citation is different from acknowledgement? Mm, contributions to the reported research that is sufficiently significant to qualify a person to join the authors in writing of the research nor contained in a citable source should be recognized in acknowledgements. A person whose research contribution is acknowledged in the report is only accountable for the specific contribution uh, for which the person is acknowledged not for the whole report. So, we should be very, very specific about we are acknowledging whom for what kind of work because that person is accountable for that specific contribution that is mentioned in the 
report. Now, what are the qualifications for authorship? A person is eligible for authorship of a report when at least both of these contributions are met. Person has made a significant contribution with respect to research design, theory development, development of prototype, analysis and interpretation etc. to the research reported. The person has reviewed or approved the final manuscript. Authorship makes the person accountable for the report. So, these needs to be clearly um, understood, clear, clear idea needs to be taken like what is the responsibility of the person whose work is cited, what is the responsibility for the person who is acknowledged and what is the responsibility of the person who is like authorship and what makes a person, what degree of contribution makes a person qualify eligible for authorship. These are maybe finer discussions which needs to be like we need to be very careful when we enter into collaborating research practices. So, that if somebody comes and claims for authorship, we have to understand whether that person is eligible for authorship or not uh, or only acknowledging that person's contribution is ok or citing somebody's work is ok. Like if we do not know this finer details, then sometimes it may so happen somebody may come and claim for the authorship and we do not know in that case what is the appropriate action to be taken. Should we like recognize the person as the author and give credit for it or not. As per IEEE authorship should be only be credited when a person has made a significant intellectual contribution with respect to theoretical development, system or experiment design prototype development or analysis of associated work of what is contained in the manuscript contributed to drafting or reviewing or drafting or reviewing or revising of the manuscript approved the final version of the manuscript. What are the responsibilities of an author of a research article? Each author is accountable for the entire report until and unless specific statements are made with respect to the contribution made by each author. In absence of any such statements, all are equally accountable for the integrity and competence of the research reported. Now, we have to understand clearly what are the categories of authors. So, who qualifies to be the first author, who qualifies to be the second author, there could be sometimes what happens controversies regarding like suppose you are working under your guide. So, who, who becomes the first author and who becomes the uh, second author. So, there this could be um, uh, some controversies regarding it. So, there are different categories of authors like lead author submitting author, corresponding author and senior author. Let us see what are these differences. Lead author holds the principal responsibility for the work, is the one who has made the greatest intellectual contribution to work, bears responsibility for whole report even if other specified contributions are specified. Submitting author is one who submits the manuscript, deals with journals, editors, only points of correspondence, wants a special responsibility to see that all authors have fulfilled the criteria for authorship, makes sure that the special journal requirements are met. So, this author tries to correspond to and seeks to maintain like all the criteria with respect to the 
journal publication has been met or not. So, sometimes what happens submitting author is the lead author, corresponding author is the one whom interested people can contact for the work published for any clarifications or queries or doubts, receives typically the most of the reprints of the authored article, offered an asterisk indicates the corresponding author by his or name in the author list. A co-author is usually the corresponding author. Senior author, it is an ambiguous term which talks of the sometimes talks of the lead author or the seniorest more uh, senior most author who is in the highest academic rank or of the greatest reputation in the field. One of the major issue is of course, plagiarism. It is generally understood to be the appropriation of another person's ideas, processes, results or words without giving any proper credit. It is considered as a serious research misconduct. It just does not apply to text, but also to graphics representations such as photographs, tables and charts as well. What are the technical qualifications for plagiarism? This is very important which needs to be remembered. Uncredited verbatim copying of a full paper, uncredited verbatim copying of a large portion greater than 20 percent or up to 50 percent, uncredited verbatim copying of individual elements like paragraph sentences or illustrations. Uncredited improper paraphrasing of pages or paragraphs. It occurs when only a few words or phrases have been changed or the order of the original sentence have been rearranged and no credit wrote or reference appears in the text. Credited verbatim copying of a major portion of paper without clear delineation. It occurs when sections of an original paper are copied from another paper, credit source is used, but there is an absence of quotation mark. So, that original text and the new text gets merged together and like we are not able to find out like which is the con contribution of the present author and what is the contribution of the earlier author who has been referred because there is no credit given by putting off like the uh, either in terms of apostrophes or brackets. So, that we can understand this portion is by the original author or quotations. So, how do we share credit amongst co-authors? As collaborations are becoming very common, it becomes essential that early discussion are held and issues regarding sharing co-authorship are resolved. It will help in avoiding misunderstanding as well as conflict of interest at a later stage. So, when it is in the submission or in a print state. So, one of the things which will be some like final issues will be the determination of the order of authors. So, how do you determine this? First author is usually the lead author. The lead author is usually indicated by keeping his name as the first author. Last author whose name appears as last in the manuscript usually implies the author who has made the least contribution. So, it is in order of importance sort of. The head of the laboratory where the research is carried out is most often, but not always provides the leadership to the research team. Inclusion of his or her name in as the first, last or middle authors 
depends upon the contribution made by him. So, what person could be the head of the laboratory, but while crediting the person for authorship, we need to understand the contribution made by that person directly into the research and the amount of contribution made. So, what can be done to avoid conflict and misunderstandings? So, conflicts and interests may arise in engineering laboratories. These can be reduced if trainees and supervisors have a dialogue between credit between themselves about credit in advance and supervisors crediting early in relationship. Engineering resource supervisors typically have many competing responsibilities which include like the for the advance of knowledge in their field for engineering, then for the education of the trainees, for the wise and appropriate use of grant funding for the institutions and world various works assigned to them. So, because they have so many of different assigned roles and interests, so to avoid any um, conflict, some issues may be resolved well in advance. So, these are the some of the important points which we need to understand um, as a part of like uh, engineering is today it is not only about just practices, but it is also disseminating your knowledge to the outside world to the other people who are working on the same domain and sharing of your findings with each other. So, when this knowledge sharing is happening, when this knowledge transfer is happening, issues related to these um, authorship, issues related to plagiarism, it issues related to uh, data collection and reporting of results um, becomes important. And if we keep in mind the discussion of today, then it is definitely going to help us to avoid unethical practices and maintain the research integrity. Thank you.